Mm -hmm. Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my live videos and on this video tonight I am going to be giving you the latest news on Rabia Matondo who currently plays for Schalke if I have pronounced his name correctly After I've given you the latest news on Rabi Matondo I am going to be delving into some more topics So there you go and that So, according to recent reports Manchester United have expressed an interest in Rabi Matondo from Schalke. Now, basically, we are seeing him as an alternative to Jadon Sancho. Rabi Matonda would be a much cheaper solution than Jadon Sancho, and he is predominantly a winger, is Rabi Matonda. Now, obviously, you know, this has been his first season uh, with Schalke, of course. Rabi Matonda made his debut against Borussia Mönchengladbach. And I think he scored his first goal for Schalke in a 3-1 win against RP Lesbig. Obviously, no, Schalke did pay around just over £11 million for him from Manchester City. I think it was last summer. Because, obviously, no, I think he enjoyed quite a few years with Manchester City. But he actually no, never got in Manchester City's first team. And, of course, before he was at Manchester City, he was at Cardiff. Now, he was actually no, born in Liverpool, was Rabbi Matonda. But obviously, you know, moved to Wales at a young age. So, yeah. So, recent reports have said that Manchester United have expressed an interest in the player. Um, he did sign a four-and-a-half-year deal, I think, when he signed for Schalke. So, he has got a contract with Schalke until 2023. That's his contract, Rabbi Matondas. And I think he's made around 21 appearances for Schalke this season. That. So, do you think he would be a good alternative to Jadon Sancho? You know, so yeah, so basically, you know, that is the latest news on him, and he's Welsh as well. Obviously, you know, don't forget, we got Daniel James last summer for £15 million from Swansea, and I think, you know, he has done very, very well as Daniel James. You know, this has been his first season at Manchester United. I'm surprised Daniel James has played as many games to the extent as he has done. Very, very surprised about that. And I think from my own perception, we have been overplaying Daniel James, if I'm going to be quite honest. You know, Daniel James can play on the left and he can also play on the right, but he seems to be more effective from that left-hand side. And I think Daniel James has played over 30-odd games this season in all competitions for Man United. Obviously, you know, Ryan Giggs was, you know, Ryan Giggs played a big part in us, you know, getting Daniel James last summer. Don't forget, you know, Ryan Giggs has also advised us to get another Welsh player in, and that is Joe Roden. I think I give you the news regarding Joe Roden earlier on this week. It did say, you know, that Joe Roden would probably cost us around £20 million and that. So, yeah, so would you take Rabbi Matondo at Manchester United? Do let me know in the comments below. Do you think he'd go well alongside the likes of Rashford, Greenwood and Anthony Martial in our attacking line and that? So, yeah, so he's another player we are now in for from the Bundesliga and that. So, there you go. But like I said, um, Jadon Sancho to Manchester United this summer may not now be happening because like he updated you on my recent video that I did earlier on today, Obviously, you know, the Borussia Dortmund managing director has come out and he actually, you know, says that he wants Jadon Sancho to, to remain in Germany. He obviously, you know, wants the players anyway to stay at Borussia Dortmund. But Dortmund are convinced that Sancho will stay with them this summer. Obviously, you know, because of the coronavirus pandemic and stuff like that. And he also did say to the managing director, you know, that transfer fees, you know, will drop. And obviously, you know, he says that loan moves will increase and in that, you know, he, he probably believes there'll be more loan moves than permanent moves. But I'll replicate what I mentioned on a recent video, you know, do you think there's a possibility to chance that we can get Jade and Sancho on loan? Now, it said last week from the mainstream media that we are planning to sign Jade and Sancho in the summer of 2021, which is, of course, next year. You know, but Brushy Dortmund confirmed last week that they expect Jaden Sancho to stay with them in the summer. It also came out last week saying that Jaden Sancho wants to transfer back home to London if he was to leave Brushy Dortmund. Don't forget, Jaden Sancho began his footballing career in London with Watford because he was at Watford for several years, was the player. He was at Watford for several years. Like I mentioned, if Jadon Sancho was to go back to London, I think he would make a move to Chelsea, you know, because Chelsea have been in for Jadon Sancho. Borussia Dortmund have been, you know, had a few players on their agenda who could replace him. You know, recently they've expressed an interest in Charlie Webster, 
who's currently a 16-year-old who plays for Chelsea. Now, even, you know, due to the financial issues with the coronavirus pandemic, you know, Borussia Dortmund remain ruthless over their valuation. They have said they want at least £100 million. Some reports have said, you know, it could cost up to £120 million. Don't forget, it did confirm that we've been in negotiations with Jaden Sancho's agent for quite some time. We've also been working on his contract. Fabrizio Romano broke out that news a while back, and obviously Fabrizio Romano is an Italian journalist. Don't forget, it did say as well that, you know, we are willing to offer Jaden Sancho the number seven, because obviously, you know, we've got number seven vacant at the moment. You know, obviously, we've had a lot of good number sevens up and down the generations, such as Ronaldo, George Best, Eric Cantona, David Beckham and all of that. But our recent number sevens haven't been so good. So if Jaden Sancho doesn't sign this summer, who will be Manchester United's next number seven? Who will be Manchester United's next number seven? But if Jaden Sancho is sold this summer, Manchester City do benefit from it, you know, because they do get around 15% of the transfer fee. Don't forget Dimitar Berbatov recently gave his verdicts on Sancho. And, you know, he believes he's better off staying at Borussia Dortmund rather than coming to Manchester United because maybe he believes, you know, maybe now isn't the right time for him to come to Manchester United. But I did outline the few reasons why it would be beneficial for us to recommend him in is because he's got a very, very good friendship with Rashford. Also, too, you know, he's well proven in the Premier League. Again, same sort of thing with Rabi Matonda with, you know, Sancho, you know, Rabi Matonda didn't get any first team opportunities at City when he was at when he joined in 2016. And Sancho, of course, never got any first team opportunities at Manchester City. So that's the main explanation why Sancho left Manchester City to join Borussia Dortmund. Sancho is now into his third season with Dortmund. And of course, you know, he paid, Dortmund only paid around £8 million from Man City. But obviously, you know, his valuation has persistently grown, reflecting on how good Jaden Sancho's performances are. Jaden Sancho has got a contract with Borussia Dortmund until 2022. So he's got like, is it, you know, just under two years remaining on his contract. Borussia Dortmund is the third club in his playing career. But maybe he will stay at Dortmund next season, but I don't think he will be at Dortmund for the foreseeable future. Like I said, you know, Dortmund, you know, have recruited a few, a few players in, in recent years and stuff, but obviously, you know, they have let a lot of their players go to the Premier League and that, you know, they lost Aubameyang, they lost Pulisic, they lost Kagawa, they lost Mkhitaryan, they lost Ilkwan Gundogan, you know, they also lost Usain Dembele to Barcelona in 2017. Obviously, you know, he went to Spain though, so they have lost quite a few of their imperative players, have Borussia Dortmund and that, so there you go. And Jadon Sancho, of course, is predominantly a right winner and, of course, Man United are in search for a right winner. Winning search for the right winner and that and Jaden Sancho is only at the age of 20. Don't forget, you know, Brushy Dortmund did make an admission though saying that if Jaden Sancho does want to leave, they will not step in his way. So there you go and that. So it's said before though, we've had quite a few players as alternatives though, alternatives on our agenda, you know, to Jaden Sancho. So the latest name is Rabbi Matondo from Schalke. You know, would you take him at Manchester United and that? Because like I said, you know, it would be a much cheaper solution, definitely, and that. So that is the latest news on that. Um, obviously, you know, you already know the news on Moussa Dembele. There's been a lot of positivity coming out regarding Moussa Dembele. I give you the news on Moussa Dembele um, earlier on today. I've been talking with you about Moussa Dembele regularly, at least in the last couple of days, because obviously, you no know, reports have come out recently and suggested that Manchester United have reached a transfer agreement with Leon for Moussa Dembele and we are willing to pay around £61 million for Moussa Dembele because Leon have said they want around £61 million pounds to let him go. Like I said, also to Chelsea have expressed their interest, but I think Moussa Dembele has come out and he's actually you know, said that he would like to make a move to Man United and he would find it hard to reject a move to Manchester United. But, you know, Leon President made an admission saying that Leon could lose quite a few of their players. Now, like I said, you know, it's, it'd be very beneficial for us to recommend Moussa Dembele in is because, you know, he's well proven in the Premier League because he did play for Fulham when he was younger. He began his senior career with Fulham. I think he was in Fulham senior squad for a good three years, scored 19 goals in 64 competitive matches, in, matches for Fulham. Obviously, you know, then he, he, after Fulham went to Celtic, did he very, really, really well there. Scored a good 52 goals in 94 games for Celtic. 
Then obviously, you know, now he's at Leon, and this has been his second season with Leon. And at Leon, he's got 42 goals in 88 games in all competitions. And obviously, he's got a contract with Leon until 2023, so still a few years remaining on his contract. But, you know, if Leon gets 60 odd million, £61 million pounds him, you know, they're going to make a decent profit on the player. You know, they're going to make around a 40 odd million pound profit because Leon only paid £20 million pounds him from Celtic in the summer of 2018 and that. But I think if we've got Moussa Dembele in, that would be good business from the club. And I think he'd be a great addition to the squad. I really, really do. And he is an out-and-out number nine because, you know, Manchester United are in search for a striker. There's been a lot of strikers on our agenda, like I've mentioned to you. You know, a hell of a lot of strikers. But a recent reports are to be believed and it's looking very, very in him that Moussa Dembele is a striker that we're going to sign. Um, obviously, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty over Odina Gallo's future. Me, personally speaking, and I think a lot of Manchester United fans will agree with me on this aspect, that we will not sign Odina Gallo on a permanent transfer because obviously, you know, Shanghai Shinu have said they want £20 million to let him go on a permanent transfer and I just don't see Manchester United paying that now. That figures totally contrast to what was coming out. To what was coming out the um, was it a month or so ago now? Because it said you know it only cost us fifteen million pounds to get Odina Gallo on a permanent transfer. Obviously, you know we paid around four million to get Odina Gallo on loan, and we are paying like what is it a third of his wages, something like that at the moment, because his wages at Shanghai Shenu are like three hundred grand a week. Odina Gallo did reveal that he wants his loan deal extended at the football club because Odina Gallo's loan at the football club does expire at the end of this month. But Shanghai Shinu have confirmed that they do expect Odina Gallo to return in time for the start of the new Chinese Super League season. I think their season does start in July. But I think Gallo has been a good cover-up to, to Rashford, to be fair. That's one admission I've got to make. It's been a very, very good cover-up to him because obviously, you know, Marcus Rashford has been out of a back injury since January and that. So you already know the news anyway on Marcus Rashford. You know, I give you the news on him yesterday. Obviously, you know, Rashford was at Carrington training ground yesterday. Obviously, you know, Rashford's been stepping up his fitness regime. I think he's around 80% fit now. But he's in the past fortnight, he's been to Carrington twice a week. Obviously, you know, to have treatment and that. But he has been out with this back injury since January, Rashford. And the last game he did play was our 1-0 win against Wolves in the FA Cup third round replay and that. So, like I said, you know, it will be good to see Marcus Rashford back in action. So, yeah. So, definitely, you know, Manchester United do need a striker. So, yeah, revert back to what I said about Agarlo. So, we are facing a huge dilemma over at Odin Agarlo at the moment because we don't know what to do with him at the moment. I think Solskjaer wants to get him permanently, but... There again, on the other hand, Solskjaer is getting advised not to get him on a permanent transfer. It's a cheap solution, but there again, there's much better options out there than Odi and Igalo. You know, strikers that have been in our agendas, you know, Werner, Haaland, Werner, Haaland, you know, Kane earlier, Kane a couple of months ago, was it, or a month or so ago. You know... A lot of strikers, you know, are on our current agenda because, you know, we need an adequate replacement for Romelu Lukaku because, obviously, you know, Lukaku left the football club last summer. He went to Inter Milan for £72 million and, obviously, you know, Lukaku did enjoy 10 years at Manchester United. Um, obviously, earlier on today as well, I give you the breaking news on Angel Gomez from... Angel Gomez from us. I think Angel Gomez is going to be one of the players that's leaving Manchester United, to be quite honest with you, because obviously, you know, don't forget, Angel Gomez is out of contract at the end of next month. So if we don't get him a new contract, he's going to be going on a free transfer. And it's looking very, very likely that we're not going to be getting Angel Gomez a new contract at the football club. It's looking very, very likely now. Obviously, you know, it confirmed earlier on this week that contract talks between Man United and Angel Gomez are at a standstill. You know, we have put forward quite a few contract offers for Angel Gomez, you know, but he has turned these contract offers down. It did confirm, you know, that Chelsea have been in negotiations 
you know, with Angel Gomez, his agent, you know, I think Chelsea convinced they can get a deal over the line for him also to Arsenal recently expressed their interest, Barcelona. I think we have set a deadline for Angel Gomez. He's got to make a decision on his future by sometime next week or something like that. But he is only at the age of 19, but he's only made six first team appearances this season. And I think he's got strong reservations about, you know, he's get him get himself getting into the first team. So maybe Gomez does want to leave Manchester United, but we want to keep him and want to try and convince him to sign a new contract so there you go so that's what i've been giving you an update on today and that so yeah now next topic is that i think manchester united can become title contenders next season if we enjoy a, perf a perfect transfer window now obviously no we've already revealed our plans for the summer and, you know, we've said, you know, we want to make three big signings this summer. And the players, of course, that we do want to recommend in are obviously, you know, Sancho, Bellingham and Jack Grealish. Like I said, that trio are going to cost us around £220 million. Sancho is going to cost us at least £100 million. Bellingham's going to cost us around £30 to £35 million. And Jack Grealish is going to cost us around... 60 or 70 million, providing that Villa don't get relegated. But like I mentioned before, if Villa get relegated, Grealish will cost us probably around... You're probably getting cheap, you know, you're probably getting for around £50 million and that. You know, you know, you already know the news on Bellingham anyway. You know, Birmingham have said they want at least £30 million. You know, obviously, was it back in March? Jude Bellingham had visited our Carrington training ground and that, you know, because he met up with Sir Alex Ferguson, held talks with him. Also, to Ed Woodward, had had some negotiations with his parents and that. Um, would you take Bellingham at Man United? Uh, don't forget, you know, we have made him a promise. If we do recommend uh, Jude Bellingham into the football club, he will get into the he'll be become a first team player immediately and that. So that has uh, been confirmed. Obviously, you know, a couple of months ago, it said that, you know, Borussia Dortmund were leading the race for the player that was stemming from the German press. This has been Jude Bellingham's first season in the senior squad with Birmingham. Played 30-odd games in the Championship this season. So he's been playing persistently. Obviously, you know, made his debut at the age of 16 years and 38 days. Did the player. And he's expected to sign a professional contract in the summer when he does turn the age of 17. I think he's 17 nearly now. He's 16 years of age at the moment. He's Bellingham. So there you go. And obviously, you know, you already know the news on Grealish. Obviously, you know, Solskjaer's had a private conversation with him. I think this private conversation taken place in our 2-2 draw with Aston Villa earlier on in the season. Obviously, you know, you had Paul Merson coming out, was it, earlier on this week, saying that Grealish will 100% leave Aston Villa if Philly, you know, do get relegated. Like I said, Jack Grealish has remained loyal to Aston Villa for several years. You know, he's up until this point, he spent the entirety of his career with Aston Villa as Grealish. Obviously, you know, he can play as an attacking midfielder and he can also play as a winner. He's only the age of 24 and he's got a contract with uh, Aston Villa until 2023. But Grealish has been a Villa player since the age of six and he's been in their senior squad since 2014. But there has been quite a few clubs that have been in for him and that. And I think regardless of what happens with Pogba, I think Pogba's Probably staying now anyway, but even if he was to leave, um, I still think, you know, we'll be looking to get Jack Grealish on the board. So there you go. I think, you know, we can be competitive in the summer transfer window, even though Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did come out last week and actually, you know, say there is uncertainty in the summer transfer window. He did, you know, make a key transfer statement, you know, saying it's going to be totally different in the summer transfer window. So it's going to be co totally contrast, you know, to the recent transfer windows under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because I've got to make an admission. I think, you know, we have really, really improved in the transfer market under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You know, what I mean is I think we've been a bit more sensible with our recruitment and obviously, you know, Solskjaer's got, you know, the players that he wanted to recommend in and that. You know, so far Solskjaer's enjoyed three transfer windows at the football club and he has spent £220 million on five players. And the five players that he has recommended in so far have been very, very impressive. There again, though, no, Solskjaer didn't recommend anyone in, in his first uh, transfer window, of course. And obviously, you know, this summer transfer window will be Solskjaer's fourth window, I think, in total. 
and it will be you no know, second summer transfer window as Manchester United manager. But he will be definitely here next season. But we have got a lot of players on our agenda. Solskjaer, of course, has identified the areas in the squad where he does want to strengthen up. He wants to recommend a centre forward and a right winner and a midfielder. Some reports have still said that he wants to recommend a centre half in. So there you go and that. So there you go. Um, by the way, uh, there's two young players that are incoming as well that I've mentioned to you on, I think, a few of my other videos. Obviously, you know, we're going to be getting Joe Huggle from Sunderland, that, you know, that Youth Academy player, I think he is. Um, I think, you know, we've agreed around a £250,000 deal with Sunderland for him. I think it mentioned that we've offered him around 1200 a week. Also, too, I think we've got Mark Joado from Barcelona, you know, that Youth Academy player from Barcelona. I think we've paid just over £1 million for him in compensation, so that has uh, been confirmed. That has uh, been confirmed. They are incoming, so that's obviously not very, very good news. Obviously, like I said, Ed Woodward has been talking a hell of a lot. You know, he came out quite a few weeks ago, did Ed Woodward, and he told the fans for him that, you know, we may not do business as usual in the summer transfer market. So in that aspect, you know, he ruled out big transfers to Man United and he did say, you know, we won't be spending hundreds of millions of pounds on players. But I said in general anyway, I think a lot of teams are going to face unprecedented summer transfer windows, you know, with this coronavirus pandemic. So... You know, teams are going to lose players for a lot less than what the what they're worth. You know, teams aren't going to get the some players you know that they want in in the summer because obviously you know they are going to cost too much money and stuff like that. But I think you know we can get the right caliber players in in the summer. So we want to make around three or four signings. You know, a lot of people you know do like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's transfer strategy as well because Solskjaer you know, still wants to continue the policy of recruiting young British players to Manchester United, but. Ed Woodward, you know, has said uh, on quite a few occasions throughout the course of this season that he's willing to back Solskjaer and also, too, he's assured that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job is safe because probably, you know, Ed Woodward, you know, does believe that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the foreseeable future for Manchester United. I think the Glazers have got the same perception on Woodward in that aspect because I think the Glazers have said a few times this season they're also willing to back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and that. But like I said, Tino, you know, we have been criticised for several years, you know, with how poor our recruitment policy has been. You know, we've also been criticised for overpaying for players in recent years because I've got to make an admission, you know, we have overpaid for players. And like I said, it's Ed Woodward that has received his criticism. He's received a lot of criticism as Ed Woodward. You know, Ed Woodward confirmed quite a few weeks ago and now, like he updated you, that, you know, he's no longer looking to recommend the director of football in. I think the main explanation is reflects on the impact Solskjaer has made and probably trust Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, you know, he trusts Ole Gunnar Solskjaer with a transfer budget, basically. He believes he can get the right players in. I've got a lot of trust with it in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but we was in search for a director of football for around two years and that. But like I said, I want Manchester United to win the league again, obviously. Do I think we can win it next season? Possibility chance. Not likely. I think we can challenge for a league next season, definitely. But we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. You know, the last time we won it was in Alex Ferguson's last season. So we haven't won it now for seven years. And, you know, we haven't uh, been... We haven't, we've failed to mount a title challenge up now. This is a seventh successive season, sorry. We failed to mount any kind of title challenge up, so that just indicates how how inconsistent that Manchester United have been. In that, but like I said to you, Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since the Alex Ferguson era. Obviously, like I said, the last time we dominated football was under the Alex Ferguson era. Of course, Alex Ferguson enjoyed what twenty six years at Manchester United. You know, a very long serving manager. You know, we had so much success under him, you know, won a total of 38 major honours under the Alex Ferguson era. You know, Ferguson, though, didn't win out in his first four years at the football club, if you do remember that. But, you know, we just dominated up and down the generations um, under the Alex Ferguson era. And that that's the only time we've, you know, been dominant under Ferguson. You know, we wasn't, we wasn't good under David Moyes. We were dreadful under David Moyes. You know, David Moyes enjoyed, what, eight and nine months at the football club. We knew it was never going to work out under him anywhere. And obviously, you no know, Ferguson was ever at the fault for recommending Moyes in at the time. That he recommended him in because he was both Scottish. 
you know, Van Gaal was dreadful under him. We had a good start, but then after that was dreadful, you know, because our football was so turgid under Van Gaal. Van Gaal enjoyed two years at Man United and obviously, you know, won the FA Cup with us. And obviously, you know, was terrible under Jose Mourinho. You know, Jose Mourinho enjoyed two and a half years at Man United and won the Europa League and the League Cup in his first season. Now. So we've been dreadful in them managerial areas. Analyzing the vast majority of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's tenure, you know, we have been dreadful. But obviously, you know, before the football season got suspended, you know, we was in a good vein of form. Because obviously, don't forget, we are unbeaten in our last 11 games in all competitions. And, you know, and we also did well in that three-month period when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the interim manager in that. Um, I think, you know, even before the Ferguson era, you know, like I said, we was inconsistent, you know, wasn't good under the Ron Atkinson era, we was, wasn't so good under Franco Farrell era. I think we got relegated under Franco Farrell. Uh, when, you know, under Wolf McGuinness wasn't so good, Wolf McGuinness enjoyed 18 months at Man United and I think he only managed to manage to recruit one player in and that. So, yeah, but obviously, as you all know, at the moment, City and Liverpool are both strides ahead of us you know, at least a couple of years ahead of us at the moment. But, you know, some people believe we can compete with them next season if we are to get the right signings in. You know, like I said, you know, players are expected to leave Manchester United in the summer as well. We're going to get rid of around six players in the summer, maybe even seven players. You know, we'll get rid of Phil Jones, we'll get rid of Pereira. Lingard will probably stay for another season because I think it said we're going to trigger that one-year extension on his contract. Small and Rojo, they'll they'll go out on permanent transfers. Obviously, you no know, Smalling's out on loan with Roma. Rojo Rojo's out on loan. Estudiantes possibly Delo could go. Like I said, Angel Gomez will be going. Sanchez will probably loan him back out. We won't be able to get rid of him on a permanent transfer. So there you go. So players are going to go, but obviously, you no know, Solskjaer anyway has got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he got recommended into the football club. So there you go. And now I was hearing there uh, last week, you know, when Solskjaer came out this key transfer statement, you know, that we was going to get around two hundred and seventy four million pounds to spend in the summer. So um, there you go. So there you go, and. You already know the news as well, don't you, on Paul Pogba. Uh, Paul Pogba is going to be staying at Manchester United next season. I'm not sure, though, about the foreseeable future, but I'm, you know, very, very excited about, you know, the prospects of, you know, Paul Pogba and Bruno Fernandes playing together in our midfield because they've not yet had the chance of Pogba and Bruno Fernandes to play together in our midfield. You know, Paul Pogba's appearances have been limited this season. He's only played eight times for the football club. His appearances have been limited due to his injuries of Paul Pogba's in that. And obviously, you know, he has been very, very infuriated with his injuries, but he's revealed his plan ahead of his return. He's aiming to be the best player in the world. Luke Shaw's obviously you know, said he's, you know, the toughest player to get the ball off in training. You know, James said, you know, Rashford and Pogba back, you know, we can win the title next season because they've been a big miss, both players, throughout the course of this season. Obviously, you know, there's been reports coming out today, you know, saying that Juventus um, are willing to offer us cash for Pogba plus Federico Bernadeschi as part of the deal, but swap deals have been on the agenda. You know, there's talks of Douglas Costa, there's talks, been talks of Aaron Ramsey, there's been talks of Adrian Rabiot as well. You know, talks of delit around a month or so ago, so swap deals have been on the agenda, but they are very, very rare in the modern game. Juventus as well can't afford to pay the £100 million that we would want if we were to let him go, and of course they can't afford his wages, by the way. Real Madrid, of course, it confirmed, was it early on this week or last week, that, you know, it's been confirmed Real Madrid are no longer in for him as well because of his wages, you know, Real Madrid, of course, have been relentless linked to him this year, there was also a relentless link with him last summer. In recent weeks, PSG and Juventus have expressed an interest in Paul Pogba and that. By the way, Pogba's got exactly a year left on his Manchester United contract, but I think the club do have the option to extend it by a further year. Confirmed last week that Ed Woodward had lowered Paul Pogba's asking price from £150 million to just £100 million. And it mentioned that we could lose Paul Pogba for just 60 or £70 million and all that. But I think he's staying at the football club anyway. Don't forget recently Paul Pogba, you know, was training in Chesterfield. He's recently been training again, you know, alongside Lindelof Pereira and I think Anthony Martial. So that's good that Pogba is stepping up his fitness regime and that. So I can't wait, you know, till he does come back. Can't wait, you know, till he does come back and that. So um, there you go. 
On my last video as well, um, like I said, Tino, Tottenham and Manchester United is the first game is the first game to be played in the Premier League, you know, when it does resume. I think, you know, it's going to be resuming on the 20th of June. You know, he said it's the Tottenham Man United game is the first game back and it's going to be uh, live on TV and it is, of course, Friday night football and that. So, obviously, you know, that's very, very good news. Obviously, you know, we are planning on returning to... Well, we are, sorry, not planning. We are returning to training next week on the 18th of May. So, that's very, very good news. There's been talks of games being venued at neutral stadiums, but I don't think this will happen because a lot of teams have protested against it. So, I think they'll just play at the actual normal stadiums, not neutral, not neutral grounds. Obviously, you know, games are going to be played behind closed doors, but at least the season is resuming. You know, we were supposed to be playing Tottenham, you know, on the 15th of March. But obviously, you know, due to lockdown with the coronavirus pandemic, obviously, you know, we couldn't. Football season's been suspended now for around eight weeks. But it's good that, you know, that it is resuming. The Bundesliga is resuming, by the way, this weekend. You know, there's nine games remaining in the Premier League. You know, we're sitting fifth in the Premier League at the moment. I don't know what's happening with the European games. I think, if I'm right, the FA Cup games and that. And I think also, too, is it the Carabao Cup games? They're scrapped because these 92 games to play in all competitions. So there you go. And that. like I updated you before, we've got around nine players' contracts that are due to expire uh, next year. Or is it eight? It's eight or nine. But that's something else we do need to sort out as well. A lot of players' contracts have been extended since Solskjaer came in, to be fair. I think, you know, there's still a lot of players, you know, that, you know, will stay at Manchester United, you know, for next season who are here now. Because I think there's still quite a few players in our squad that I've got foreseeable futures at the football club and that. So, um, there you go. Like I said, you know, there's still things Solskjaer needs to work on. You know, he needs to work out his best formation. He maybe needs to make a tactical change as well. But, you know, Solskjaer's been here now 17 months. He's been at the football club over the years. So he has been here now for quite some time. And he has got around two years remaining on his contract and that. So um, there you go. So, yeah, so that's the news on Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Matonda and all the rest of the news. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing as always. And take care. God bless. And I'll see you all again very, very soon.